This episode is brought to you by Wear Buff, your go-to for Buffalo-inspired apparel. Get your hands on stylish t-shirts, hoodies, and more at wearbuff.com. That's W-E-A-R-B-U-F dot com. And make sure you use the promo code TWB at checkout for 10% off your first order. Stay Buffalo proud with Wear Buff. The Buffalo Bills wrap up the preseason with a 31-26 loss to the Carolina Panthers. This week on the Wandering Buffalo Podcast. You're now listening to the Wandering Buffalo Podcast with your host, Justin Gottard. Bills Mafia, welcome to another episode of the Wandering Buffalo Podcast, a show on the Buffalo Fan Base Podcast Network. My name is Justin, and I will be your host today, and we did it. We made it through preseason. We made it through the off season. Next game up for the Bills, regular season, starting the quest for that highly elusive Super Bowl victory. So I don't want to spend you know a ton of time breaking down this last preseason game. You know we we've been saying it the whole preseason of you know taking everything with a grain of salt and you know who's playing with who and you know, who has success, but who are they playing against, all that type of stuff. And when we get into this third preseason game, you're seeing nearly none of the starters for the Bills. You match it up with a comparison of the Panthers, who are in a very different spot of their life cycle as a team. Their first-round quarterback is, is playing a decent amount of football in this game. Meanwhile, we're, you know, trotting out Anthony Brown, who's been on the team for about five days, whatever. So I don't want to spend a ton of time, you know, breaking down the whole game, everything that happened. Just kind of want to touch on some of the players that I thought popped for me. And to me, this is the third preseason game has largely become for me Some of these guys that are roster bubble guys, will they make it? Are they going to get cut? Do they have a path to the practice squad? Those are the kind of players that, you know, I'm I'm really following during these games and kind of looking for guys who haven't popped much in the preseason to, you know, show, show me something to tell me I was wrong about them type deal. Um, And I do want to start with the quarterbacks. And again, this is going to be kind of like my last blanket statement on it. I understand it's the third preseason game. I know it's basically the most meaningless football game that that we'll watch, right? But under the, the context, the situation of everything, I do want to start with the quarterbacks. And, you know, we're start off the season with Josh Allen, Mitch Trubisky, and Shane Buchel. Mitch Trubisky and Shane Buchel both get hurt and we bring in Ben DiNucci last week and Anthony Brown this week. The two of them combined have about two weeks on the roster and I will say that I was at least marginally impressed with the two of them and kind of putting it up against Mitch Trubisky, and I, I know this is going to get into the, well, Mitch was playing against starters, all that type of stuff, but for a very long time on this podcast, I've been kind of advocating for using a draft pick on, you know, a mid mid to late round pick on a toolsy quarterback that can be behind Allen, that will bring something to the table if Allen goes out maybe develop to be something down the road. And I I just, I don't get that with Mitch Trubisky. And I hear Joe Marino say it all the time. Uh, Bruce New- Bruce Nolan talks about it all the time. You know, having the, the, the variance, the tools, some options at your backup quarterback, if you're not going to get, you know, a, an acceptable level of play that's going to get you through games give defenses some variances to deal with. And I, I think I saw that from both of these quarterbacks in the game. 
And while we're, we're talking about it being backups and, you know, coaches aren't really game planning. It's more about getting these players the exposure, all that. I will say that I, I like the game plan that Joe Brady put together for these guys. There was, you know, some quick throws to get the ball out of the quarterback's hands, let the receivers go create. The quarterbacks got themselves involved with, you know, some scrambling, moving around. And, I mean, overall, the Bills end up scoring 26 points. So that it's not a terrible, you know, performance output that we're getting from them. But the quarterbacks themselves, you know, a little bit to be left desired in the yards per attempt, all that type of stuff. But, you know... Anthony Brown ends up 11 for 12 for 102 yards and Ben DiNucci 11 for 15 for 76 yards and a touchdown. That's not terrible performances as far as I'm concerned compared to, you know, what we're getting out of Mitch Trubisky and, you know, it's the backup quarterback position. If, if Allen goes down, we're in a bad spot anyways, but to me, watching these these guys play the quarterback position during this game, they looked like they were playing with nothing to lose. They looked like they were playing fearless, trying to earn a spot. And it's kind of the exact opposite of what I see from Mitch Trubisky at this point. He kind of looks, you know, too scared to make a mistake. And by not wanting to make a mistake, he's holding on to the ball for too long. He's not taking any risks so he's not pushing the ball and I don't know if we're going to be in bad shape at quarterback anyways if Allen goes down or if these guys have to play it all I want to see a little bit of gunslinger I want to see I want to see some different element brought to the position that it's going to make it hard to more difficult for a defense to defend versus you know a quarterback that's just dropping back and you know just isn't on that that level of being a pocket passer being a distributor of the football if you're not going to be you know like a starter level at that close to a starter level at that give me some variants give me some tools make it exciting for me come cut down day do I think either of these guys is supplanting Mitch Trubisky I don't think it's very likely I think the team likes having, you know, another veteran in the room. To me, I would want to to go a different direction. We'll see what happens with Trubisky's injury. That might become a factor here where one of these guys starts out the season as the backup. Maybe the other one ends up on the practice squad. And, you know, we see what happens in the meantime with Mitch. But I think Mitch Trubisky is still, you know, provided he can be healthy for the regular season, which McDermott said he's anticipating. I don't see uh I don't see a big change happening there. The running back position was a very exciting day overall for the run game. And going back to the first preseason game where you know any of the running backs were a- weren't able to get really anything going we saw a little bit more last week and then this week it just came alive and Frank Gore Jr. I get it he's not the biggest he's not the fastest he's not you know a lot of the things that you see from elite NFL running backs and I'm not sitting here saying that he's an elite NFL running back but he was exciting in this game and I've talked about him a little bit in the past of kind of loving the pedigree, you know, having his father be in the league as a running back and having such a long career at, like, the position in the NFL that has the shortest career. I just love that he was around that his whole life and kind of has the ideas of what it takes to have that type of career. I I love his running style, and, you know, defenses don't really need to have fear in him that he's going to, you know, snap off this 70-yard run with 4-3 speed. 
they can close the gap on him pretty pretty quickly. And you know, if this was all of the Panthers ones out there, probably looks a little bit different. But I like the way he gets downhill. I like he's physical, he's compact, and you know, he put up 101 yards on 18 carries, had a touchdown. He had a really nice day. Darrington Evans, you know, gets hurt in this game, which gave Frank Gore Jr. a little bit more run. But when he was in there, he was looking pretty good himself. You know, he gets involved in the passing game, three receptions for 28 yards, and another 15 yards on the ground. I feel like both of these dudes could pretty easily be a running back three on a lot of teams. And unfortunately, they both end up not finishing this game with injuries, so we'll see what happens. One, maybe both end up on the practice squad. Maybe there's some, you know, injured reserve gymnastics going on to kind of keep these guys safe. But, you know, going going forward, you know, Ray Davis still being unproven. We have a James Cook contract situation coming up. If one of these guys can kind of show that they could, you know, be a full time RB two, I don't think that's the worst problem to have in the world. And you know, even going down to KJ Hamler ends up coming in as the running back after these two get hurt and has three carries for twenty one yards. I know he's not gonna play running back in the regular season. Maybe he'll get you know, an occasional touch, whatever, if he even ends up making the team. But I thought it was kind of exciting to see him actually get the ball in space and, like, what that speed looks like compared to these other NFL players. Because I I feel like we haven't really seen it. You know, we've seen it a little bit in the return game, but... We haven't seen him very involved in the offense. We haven't really seen much drawn up for him. We haven't seen much success. And just seeing what that burst actually looks like kind of was a nice reminder of like why this guy's in the mix. So, albeit coming in unfortunate circumstances due to uh, injuries to the other guys, I had fun with it. I, I enjoyed seeing him taking some carries. The passing game, nothing remarkable from any of the receivers that I've really been keeping an eye on for that wide receiver five slash six role, whatever the Bills end up keeping. Um, I thought the kind of the biggest negative performance for a player would have to go to Tyrell Shavers, who is somebody that was, you know, really standing out through training camp. And there's there's been a lot of talk I'm seeing going around on social media of this, you know, would-be touchdown. And it was a pass from Danucci, I believe. And, you know, people saying that it was a bad ball from Danucci and that's not on Shavers, whatever. It is what it is. People can have their opinions. To me, watching that play, it looked like Shavers really slowed down out of the break, and had he just continued running his route at the same speed, that ball would have been right on him. It would have been a touchdown. Would have been, you know, a nice ball placement where really only he could have gotten it, and it just looked like bad speed out of the break, and even at that, still looked like he might have had a chance to recover and just kind of played the ball poorly in the air. So I'm not putting that one on on the quarterback. I'm putting that that one squarely on Shavers. And for someone who's made some noise and was kind of looking to crack this roster, I, I thought that was a play that really could have set him apart and kind of had that effect, but it went the other way. Zach Davidson had a pretty nice game. Four catches on four targets, 23 yards. Trey McKitty, one catch for 20 yards. And I think these two are interesting. 
especially when considering the injury to Quinn Morris. And if this is a situation where Quinn Morris is going to miss some time, I think the the like hot name right now, the popular vote would be for Davidson because he's out there and he's, you know, more of a natural pass catcher. He's made a lot of noise in training camp. Want to kind of temper expectations there just based on what the tight end three role really entails. And it's, you know, primarily a an additional blocker. It's a guy that plays special teams. And just kind of looking at it from the perspective of Quinn Morris being on the team for a couple of years now. How much have we seen him involved in catching passes? Any of the things that you think Zach Davidson's going to do great? How much do you see Quinn Morris involved in that in the past few years? It's, you know, it's minimal targets over the course of the season. And I think if you're in a position where you need that tight end three because Morris is going to miss time. I, th- I think McKid- McKitty is a better option for filling those types of roles. Now, if you have a situation where, you know, you kept Davidson on the practice squad and Kincaid or Knox go down and you're replacing that type of skill set, I think you're looking more towards a Davidson. But when we're talking about tight end three, I just... It's not a path I see for Davidson right now. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Just just a feeling that I'm getting at this juncture. Other than that, with the receivers, not much standing out, but I do want to talk a little bit about Deion Kane. Kind of showed up and, you know, nothing, nothing crazy on the stat sheet. Three catches, three targets, 28 yards. But getting the ball in space and... You know, he was crafty with the ball. He was making people miss. He was taking these little bubble screens and, you know, getting a nice gain on the play. For what I've seen from the other receivers throughout the preseason training camp, this guy that plays special teams, and I haven't seen anybody really take control of that wide receiver five position and... You know, it's a situation where do the Bills keep five? Do they keep six? We kept five last year. And I think there's a few names here that could have, you know, really pressed the issue for the Bills to keep six receivers. And none of them really like seized that opportunity and like made it. So we have to keep this six guy. That being said, out of all the performances I've seen in the preseason, this performance from Kane was like the most excited I've been about one of these depth guys. And, you know, we still have MVS in the mix. We'll see what his, you know, health status looks like. But I also, this is kind of where I get into like the quarterback play of, I really enjoyed seeing these guys getting the ball out of their hands and getting it into the receiver's hands so we can see what they do. No, it it's it's no fun trying to evaluate wide receivers when you know Mitch Trubisky's back there, afraid to pull the trigger downfield, and you know looking for checkdowns. We got a pretty good idea of our running backs being involved in the passing game, but we didn't really get to see a ton of separation between you know. There's there's like five, six guys competing for one, maybe two spots. And just having a quarterback that's not delivering the ball and giving them opportunities to stand out. I know it's easier for the coaching staff, front office, because they get to see these practices. They get to see what these guys look like on a day-to-day basis. But from like an outside perspective as a fan, trying to get an idea of what we have in these depth guys, even when you're looking at practice squad, future teams, all that kind of stuff. Really hard to get a read on the receivers when quarterbacks aren't pulling the trigger. So I think he's a long shot to make the roster. He's only been with the team about a week, week and a half. But 
he had a really fun performance, and whenever the ball was headed his way, I I perked up a little bit. I'm going to go to special teams here. Just real quick notes. I thought Sam Martin has looked good all throughout this preseason. He kind of, you know, had a rough tail end of the last year. I I feel I feel great about him going into the season as the punter. And then on the other hand, we of course have Tyler Bass. I don't really know what to do with this situation, to be honest. He made one of two field goals. He made from 31. He missed from 51. And like I understand 51 yards isn't a chip shot, but on a nice weather day, you know, no real wind to speak of. It it's a kick you want to see your high priced kicker make. Kickers in the NFL right now are making from fifty plus all the time. It's just something you want to see. And you know, I I would have less trepidation about it if he was just, you know, money all throughout the practices and everything we see and you know, this was the blip on the radar. But seeing all the time in, you know, the practice settings, he's going, you know, four of six in team drills and seemingly every day he's missing a couple. It's just, it's concerning. And I'll even say on the extra point, you know, basically should be free points. That thing took such a, like, right-hand trajectory. If it was about a five-yard longer field goal, I'm, I'm not sure that would have gone through, so... It's a difficult situation because you do have guaranteed money tied up in him. So whatever, even if you want to cut your losses. We've seen Tyler Bass be a good kicker in the NFL and, you know, seems like he's got some stuff going on in his mind right now that he's just, he's not right for whatever reason. But, you know, if you're talking about eating his dead cap money and you have to spend money on another kicker, and it's not like these top flight kickers are just out there available all over the place. So, like, are you adding another guy that also is dealing with inconsistencies? And if so, like, what's the point? Like, might not feel good about every time Tyler Bass trots out there, but insert player X that we also don't feel good about. And, you know, it costs us the dead money and some to do it. So I don't anticipate competition being brought in I don't anticipate any sort of change happening there I think the best we can hope for is whatever's going on with Bass you know throughout repetitions he's able to work it out of his system and you know go back to being the the kicker that we saw two years ago when the Bills gave him an extension so that's all I really want to say on that for now we'll We'll see how it all shakes out during when we get to the regular season. But I mean, as of right now, there's there's not re- like any distance that I feel I feel super confident in. You know, he's running out on the field, and I'm like, hey, there's free three points. It's uh, it's it's going to be a concern for me on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, honestly, I I saved this for last because. There there wasn't a ton that I saw in defense that was super encouraging. Some flashy plays here and there from some, from some guys, but, I mean, overall, the unit, you, they gave up 31 points in a preseason game to Panthers backup players, and, you know, I, I know some of the starters did play well into the game for Carolina, so, again, grain of salt with all of this, but... They're just the Panthers just kind of had their way with the Bills on defense, so they're not not a ton of people standing out here. I thought Branson Dean looked disruptive at times, but it, it's also kind of with the caveat that I haven't really seen anything else from him throughout the preseason. So like these are guys you know, fighting an uphill battle to secure a roster spot, the, you know, the starters and even some of the depth is already kind of solidified. So 
you know, a couple flashy pops during the last preseason game, I don't think is going to get it done for a guy like that. I will say Daquan Hardy has been impressive for me throughout the preseason. I don't, I don't think he's had much concern throughout, you know, training camp, offseason, all that about making the roster. I think the Bills drafted him with, you know, a developmental cornerback mindset. And in the meantime, he can provide the Bills some pop in the return game. And I kind of thought he was going to be groomed for, you know, a backup nickel role. You know, it seems like we never really have a super solid backup behind Taron Johnson, but he's been playing a lot outside and he's looked, he's looked great to me. And also in the return game, we saw some questionable decisions again, preseason, maybe coaching staff was like, go out there and return everything you can. We want to see what you look like with the ball in your hands. But this I, I always find that hard to believe because when you when you get to the regular season, the smart decision making is it's like as important as being able to run with the ball. So you know some of those decisions to take the ball inside the five yard line and not try to let it bounce through the end zone, um, things like that. I thought we saw that get pretty well cleaned up in this game. The Eli Anku flashed a couple times. Andreessen continues to be a fun story. Eight total tackles, two solos. I thought the game against Pittsburgh was, you know, a, a much better game for him. He was all over the place. This game was just kind of like a good game for him, and I think we've seen a little bit of his deficiencies in the passing game, which is something that hadn't really popped up yet. Still a super fun story. Still, you know, think there's an outside chance he makes the roster with, you know, some of the injuries they're dealing with at linebacker, but it's like the, the legend of injuries and kind of can calm down a little bit for this week. And we'll, we'll see what happens. I could see him being, you know, a practice squad player that ends up getting the, the practice squad protection designation. Um, but we'll see what happens. Like I said, we're through the preseason. We're coming up on roster cut down day. So we'll make sure we're giving you an episode right after that. Make sure you're subscribed so you're not missing any of these episodes as we get into the regular season, as we get into cut down day. You know what happens every year with cut down days. Some players shake free, some roster turnover happens. So make sure you're not missing any of that. Like, share, subscribe, tell a friend about the show. I mentioned this last week. We're super close on YouTube to a thousand subscribers, and it's been a huge, you know, milestone goal for us. So if you're watching this on YouTube and you haven't done so, I do ask that you, you know, subscribe. Make sure you're not missing any episodes. Make sure you're checking out the fan base podcast network. We got shows coming out every day of the week. There's something out there for everybody. If you hated this show, there's probably one out there that you'll love. So give give a couple shows a listen and see what you think. I want to thank you again for joining me on this week's episode. And next we talk, we'll be talking roster cut downs and be gearing up for the regular season. As always, go Bills. <laughs>